Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Chris Lukaup and today I want to talk a little bit about why shrimp die in the aquarium and especially here I want to concentrate on the dwarf shrimp, the genus Caridina, Neocaridina, Paracaridina. So the freshwater shrimp that we can keep in the aquarium that are in the trade and I want to focus on these. Of course over the last 25 years that I keep and breed shrimp I could gather some information but also I talked to a lot of other shrimp keepers and breeders about this uh, topic and uh, yeah I could gather some information maybe you have also some info that you would like to share with me maybe I missed something but here are some good reasons why I believe that shrimp don't make it in an aquarium in my experience Every breeder or every keeper of shrimp, beginner or not, or advanced, had this topic once in his active breeding or shrimp keeping career. And usually, I would say, we don't find out why shrimp die, especially people that start in the hobby. It could be so many things, so they are usually trying to find the reasons, then they go to the internet, to YouTube, try to read stuff. There's some uh, videos that are quite okay but mostly if I look at them they're yeah it's difficult to to accept some of them but I don't want to judge it's fine everybody has his experience and that's okay and if we look at science there's not that many papers out on this topic especially when it comes to dwarf shrimp like caridina neocaridina there's just uh, a handful of uh, papers scientific papers out about this topic especially if we look at uh, nitrate or um, ammonia or ph or maybe other phosphate and stuff like that there's some studies that are connected with copper yes there we know a little bit but this is mostly because the shrimp industry that grows shrimp for food they uh, they fund these uh, papers or these scientific studies. But when it comes to neocardina, just I think it's special interest and scientists that are hobbyists or that like to know about this, they keep shrimp at home and that's why they start these, uh, yeah, these papers or these studies. Shrimp are really popular in the trade since the beginning of the 2000s. I, I kept shrimp before that, but that was like a really niche. There were just few people who kept it. And I remember the times when we we did not know nothing about them. There was no studies, even not the name. Have, the names of these shrimp have been known. So we just gave them common names, many of them undescribed. And we needed to key them out. And it took years, especially for the Neocaridina, for the new Caridina. So we did not know nothing about that. So the shrimp keeping and the experience is very young. We have like, let's say, 25 years of that, but not more. And especially in the beginning when everybody said that shrimp are super sensitive and they are hard to breed, hard to keep, especially a lot of uh, people that wanted to breed shrimp and beginners, they said, well, we are afraid to try that. We will better not. And anyway, shrimp became a big trend. They are now spread the hobbies of shrimp keeping is spread all over the world in really remote places because they are really interesting and they are beautiful and but it took time and it was a big fight because always i heard well this is just just a short trend it will be over soon no they came and they stayed and also i remember when the first sulawesi shrimp came in i had a cover story 2007 i think i presented them to the aquarium hobby and we had big problems with them in the beginning. Most of them died, nobody knew how to keep them. And today we found out, but uh, in my view, we still have problems and not that many people keep Sulawesi, but that's a different topic. I will talk about those in a different video. Also I have videos on Sulawesi, so you should check them out. So the first point I want to mention here is poisoning with fertilizers. And why? Because in history, in the shrimp keeping history, this was one of the first things we found out back in 2005, 6, even before when the companies still, when especially the big companies like Denerle, Tropica and so on, they used fertilizers for their plants in the big greenhouses. So they 
grew the plants immersed, that means above the water, and of course they used fertilizers, and these fertilizers, they stayed attached to these wools that they use to put the plants in. And later when you put the plants in the aquarium, the shrimp immediately reacted. You could see how they start going from, from one side of the aquarium immediately to the other. They have just been panicking and we did not know what is going on. So we found that out. Of course, the big companies, they took care of that. They changed the thing, the way how they uh, fertilized the, plant, the plants. Once they knew about it, they really changed that quickly. Denali was one of the first to change that. And then Tropica, Anubias and so on, all the big companies changed that. But still, Probably there is some companies that are uh, not that big and not that well known, produced somewhere in the world. They still use that and especially if they then export them to other places. And you know that if some containers with these plants arrive to Europe or to the, to the US, they always have to check for um, bugs and stuff. So it also is possible that they put them in some kind of gas then, the whole container, the whole plants. I heard that too. And of course that also has an effect on the plants, maybe not for the fish, but definitely the shrimp will react on that. So the big companies change that, but it's still an issue in some uh, companies that they use still fertilizers and they affect shrimp. Copper, for example, was such a fertilizer. And we know that heavy metals affect shrimp immediately. So what are the symptoms of poisoning? If you introduce, for example, a new object to the water that could be a root, it could be a rock, it could be even a plastic object that was made for an aquarium, the shrimp usually react in a very short time, a minute. And then they get very hectic, they get stressed out. Some of them probably will try even to climb out of the aquarium. First, the weak animals will die and then the more strong animals will also get like apathetical, they will not feed, they will just stay in a place. So these are the symptoms that the animals are not okay. And if you don't react immediately with a big water change, they will probably not see the next morning. And if it comes to water change, I would put 95% of the water out in the hope that some animals will recover and survive all this stress. Of course, you have to remove also the object. And when it comes to plants, you buy in vitro plants like these here in the cups, or you buy plants from the well-known companies. In the last video, I talked about the importance of leaves in a shrimp aquarium. Yes, you can go out collecting leaves, but be careful that it's not close to the street. I would recommend at least 100 meters away from the street because the pollution there usually is very high. So if you collect leaves, yes, you can do it, but go into the forest and leave the street and try to be at least 100 meters away from the street. Poisoning with diesel or gas. This is something that most of you probably don't even think about, but this can happen. If you go to the gas station, and you want to gas up your car and you touch the nozzle to fill the gas in the car, this usually has a lot of diesel or gas attached. And then you go home, you don't wash your hands, you just want to arrange something in the aquarium, put the hand in the aquarium, the shrimp will react immediately. Even hours after the visiting of the gas station, this can happen. It happened to myself, I lost a couple of shrimp, but I learned out of that. Poisoning with sprayed veggies. I have seen people that put all type of veggies in their shrimp aquarium. There was broccoli, there was red pepper, cucumbers a lot, carrots, pumpkins, all different types. And we all know that veggies get sprayed, especially if they are imported and not local. So if you don't wash them, the possibility is always there. Anyway, I would not give, give the shrimp any veggies because in my view, they should eat their food and they should not eat, they're not humans, they don't eat vegetables. But this is my opinion. Poisoning with chlorine. Chlorine is a constant issue in the aquarium hobby, not only for shrimp, but also for fish. And you can have a mass dying of shrimp if you are not careful with chlorine. So what can you do about that? If you have chlorine, the region like a lot of times when I go to the US, I smell it in the tap water a lot. We don't have the problem that much in Germany, but in other countries there is this problem. So you can 
put the the tap water in a bucket leave it standing for 24 48 hours and then you are safe or you put it with a lot of pressure in the aquarium or in the bucket and then the chlorine goes to the air and is not that dangerous anymore the other thing that you can do you go to a shop and buy some products that neutralize chlorine we have toxic tox x liquid here for example that is a product that is neutralizing chlorine check out garnelio.com poisoning with air sprays or smoking if you do it in an excessive way yes this can happen i know cases but if you work normal with this or you are a normal smoker then probably not old copper conductions can be a problem as well especially in older houses that are like 100 years old if the water stays in these conductions for a longer time and you put it in a nano aquarium the shrimp can get affected if it's a smaller dose then it can over time also affect the shrimp in fertility in growth in malting we know that copper has an effect on that also you can bring death to the shrimp aquarium with decorative material like woods roots because a lot of these roots are sandblasted and in some cases the people that sandblast them they don't use sand they use other materials like copper slag for example so then you can understand why some shrimp directly react on that because it gets stuck in the wood some particles and then later they release it to the water I know a lot of cases that had especially problems with Mopani wood. And because I know that Mopani wood can cause trouble in an aquarium, I went to Denele Plants. They are about 15 minutes away from my place. And I wanted to make an interview and ask Rainer Frank about how they deal with that. And he told me this wood comes from South Africa and usually it's covered in the sand and it dries out. But sometimes it can happen that the wood is still filled with the tree juice and then if you put it in an aquarium and the juice is not completely gone then it can happen that it caused trouble in the aquarium they sandblast them especially they ask for that and not to use other materials and also they cook them out for a longer time and that's why these woods for example these roots are safe death due to malting problems in my view it's one of the most common causes of shrimp death of course there are many reasons why shrimp cannot malt properly sometimes they may get stuck in the molds or because they have bacterial infections and then they have stress molds because of that malnutrition could be a reason why they don't take enough minerals and then they don't have enough minerals to build up their new uh, malt their new exoskeleton and then they could have problems we know that copper can cause malting problems but of course stress is also a main reason nutrition some other external influences that shrimp cannot properly malt if they are too old for example sometimes they can't also malt properly because maybe they don't have enough energy to do to have a good malt or a successful malt in my opinion, old age death is usually underestimated in the statistics. Shrimp usually, when you go to uh, your local fish store or even online, shrimp usually come into the trade in a certain size. That means everybody that sells shrimp, they want to sell bigger shrimp because of course the customer also likes the shrimps bigger. They will not pay a lot of money for baby shrimp or for small size shrimp, even that would be the better solution for the customer because they adapt more easy the smaller shrimp and the big shrimp have already a certain age that means they need like six to seven months to reach adult size that's usually uh, two centimeters two and a half centimeters three centimeters depending on what species you have but after seven months they are adults so they come then at, with a certain age to the stores to the online shop because also the reseller wants to offer them in a certain size so you can see them in the tank okay so they have a certain size then they come to your aquarium after one and a half two years we know that dwarf shrimps that's the lifespan of a dwarf shrimp so you will not have them too long maybe a year or a year of three months if they don't reproduce then of course uh, the shrimp will die out and this is in my view 
are usually underestimated in the statistics. Transport damage, that's another important thing in my view. And usually when you buy the shrimp in your local fish store or online, they already went a long way. So if you have, uh, if they come from a wholesaler that is not experienced or not very well experienced with shrimp, this could cause a problem. Of course, there are shops, online shops, stores that know very well how to handle them. When they come out of China or of Taiwan, they have certain water parameters in their ponds or in their tanks. And then they come to Europe, to the USA or other places. And maybe they have total different water parameters and their main business is not shrimp, their main business is maybe fish. There's wholesalers that we work together with in Ganelio, for example, and they, we, we and them, we have a, a lot of experience, but this is not always the case. So if then the shrimp go to different water parameters and finally arrive to the shop, then already they could have a transport damage. And here, for example, in Sulawesi, when I visited the exporters, they already don't keep them in a good way because they always can catch new ones. They can go to the lake and catch new ones. So if some die, they don't care. But some carry a damage with them. And finally, when they arrive in your aquarium, they are so exhausted, stressed out, they have a malting problem and so on. So this, the transport damage in my way, also here, if you see, you have to pack them properly. They need this material to hold on. If they are just in a bag without nothing, they will have a lot of stress. They cannot grab, hold on to something, and this also causes them damage. So transport damage, a big thing in my view. So wholesalers usually don't take enough time to adapt them to the new water parameters, but you at home should do that. If they arrive, finally, at home in your place after a long journey take your time to adapt them small amounts of water in the bag and do this do this several times and then probably it will be okay but take your time to adapt them to your water lack of oxygen is for sure one of the biggest challenges in a shrimp aquarium but also in a fish aquarium in aquariums that are heavily planted or have a lot of nutrients or strong bacterial activity, oxygen deficiency can occur, especially at night. During daylight, especially if you have a strong aquarium light on top of your aquarium, of course the plants will produce a lot of oxygen. But in the night, when it's dark, the plants will also use this oxygen, and also the shrimp will use this, the fish as well, and then you have the bacteria. They also use a lot of oxygen. So then, for example, if the filter is not putting a lot of uh, oxygen to the tank with water movement on, on top on the surface and you don't have plants that grow to the surface the shrimp have to stay down they try to climb up but usually they don't make it on the glass if you have roots if you have uh, plants that grow to the surface you will find them on top of the surface trying to get some atmospheric oxygen so sometimes you can see them, they even want to climb out of the aquarium or they lay like on the side and try to breathe with their gills atmospheric oxygen. And this can be a problem in warm summer nights, for example, because less oxygen is dissolved in warm water than in cool, in cool water. So high temperatures can also lead to a lack of oxygen, especially for aquarists or hobbyists who live in attics. And then in the mornings, if you find out about the death of the shrimp, it's usually the big animals or the females that carry eggs because they usually need more oxygen than smaller shrimp. So if you want to avoid all these problems with the oxygen, you can add an air stone to the shrimp aquarium. You can add an oxidator as well, or you set the filter a bit higher so the water surface moves a little bit more than usual if you just put the filter you hang I have a hang on filter for example you put it a bit higher if you have a filter inside of the aquarium you put it a bit higher so this will really help out so if it comes to KH pH like uh, TDS we know that shrimp don't like drastic changes other than that we know the parameters from the habitat and we know for example that bee shrimp they have a TDS of 70 conductivity they have a pH of 6.5 and the water temperature ranging from 16 to
to 22 degrees Celsius. So what the shrimp don't like is when the water gets warmer quick, but they have not a big problem where the water cools down more fast because in the habitat, for example, in the mornings when the sun comes out, usually there's a lot of trees around the creek in the shrimp places. So uh, the, the trees also protect a little bit the creek for getting warm too quick, but they don't have a problem if it gets cooler a bit more fast because when the rain comes in usually the water is a bit cooler and that goes much more fast but they have a problem if the water warms up quick that they don't like most of the shrimp species are used to clear clean water and usually these waters have also humic acids in them so the bacteria pressure there is not too high and shrimp are used to a low bacteria pressure. When you have them in an aquarium, especially when it's overpopulated, there's a lot of bacteria and the pressure of these bacteria can cause populations to have like total breakdowns. Then that means I've seen aquariums that had like two, three hundred shrimps in them, even more, and suddenly they all died. They remain just 10, 15 animals. Of course, if the bacteria pressure is too high, the shrimp don't like that. A lot of shrimp means a lot of bacteria. So then when the population goes down to 10, 15 animals, also the bacteria goes down. You make water changes and so on. But bacteria is also a big problem. If you have different types of bacteria from the trade, from the wholesale, that could be a big problem for shrimp as well. And of course there are also diseases and parasites that can affect the shrimp or kill the shrimp. Some are visible with the eye, for others you need a magnifying glass. And there is one that probably most of you have seen, it's called the green fungus, Cladogonium ogishimae. In the beginning we have not been sure what this was. Was it the algae, was it uh, an, a parasite, or... but now we know it and also we have a treatment for it. But this. I will talk in the next video because I need to explain several things about that. We have a treatment that's a good thing because also other shrimp in the population can be infected with the green fungus, so better you react quick. Another disease I see very often is the so-called muscle necrosis, a disease that causes massive cell death in a living organism, in this case in shrimp. This inflammatory reaction causes the cell in the muscle tissue to emit proteins and during this process the tissue turns to a milky white color. So we will have about this uh, a separate video because also I would like to talk about it and even in the, in the trade I see sometimes shrimp that are sold as milky shrimp or ivory shrimp and in fact they are sick shrimp. Planaria. This is the nightmare of a lot of shrimp keepers because you can easily get them from plants, from new shrimp, from new snails and really difficult to get rid of them. And the damage they can do to a healthy shrimp population is in my view significant. Of course the babies can be attacked by the planaria because they love protein but also the adult shrimp like you, like you see here. This planaria came out from under the carapax where the gills are came out from there because i think it was sitting there and eating already the shrimp alive and i didn't saw it before so while i was photographing it came out and i was really blown away when i saw that i kept on filming because it was already too late the shrimp was harmed too much and it will not have survived even if I would have removed the planaria. And here you can see that in this tank during the day I have not seen any planaria. When I switched on the lights suddenly all of them were sitting there feasting on a hopefully dead shrimp. Maybe the shrimp died but also maybe the shrimp was kind of attacked or um, and I believe that planaria have a plan. They are very clever animals. They are interesting animals. If you read about them, you will find out amazing stuff. I have an extra video on planaria on my channel. You should check out and take a look at that video. And then you will see that they are fascinating animals, but they are a nightmare. 
Yes, you can get rid of them, but it's a real process. I tried many ways to get rid of them. There's one thing that works, it's called no plan area, and I can just recommend that uh, this product to have it at home. It is not allowed in the EU, in the EU, as far as I know, the European community, but probably in the rest of the world, it's not a problem. But with planaria, that can be a big problem in the shrimp tank. It can affect the population. It can weaken a population. And also, you can just by giving shrimp to some of your friends, they can have them uh, in a short time spreading in their tanks. So planaria, difficult thing. Watch out of planaria. One of the members of my channel asked me, what happens if a shrimp die? Can I leave it in the aquarium? I would say no. Always remove the shrimp as quick as possible. Because still a shrimp can carry diseases or parasites. So if another shrimp feeds on it, it can infect the healthy shrimp. So in my view, a dead shrimp should always be removed from the aquarium, even if you have fish in it, whatever, just remove it, get rid of it. And I think that's the best way to keep a shrimp population healthy. Another question that a lot of people ask me is why do my baby shrimp disappear? And I have to tell them, okay, maybe it's because of the feeding. You're not feeding them enough or the right food. So baby food or baby shrimp food makes a lot of sense because baby shrimp are territorial. It means that they go, don't go from one side of the aquarium to the other side to find food. They stay in their spot and if there's nothing, they will probably starve to death. The radius is usually like 10, 20 centimeters, maybe 30 centimeters. The, the bigger they get, also the radius of their activity gets bigger. But this is one of the big problems with baby shrimp that in my view, they starve to death. You can avoid that, you can feed them better with small portions that spread all over the aquarium, so it's not a bad idea to buy baby shrimp food. Probably some of you remember the Breeders and Keepers magazine. That was a physical magazine. It sold out for a couple of years now, prices went crazy. So we decided to publish it as ebook for $9.99 because I am not happy with it that it is sold for a couple of hundred dollars three, four, five hundred dollars per magazine because for me it's important that everybody that wants information gets the information for a good price. Check out the Breeders and Keepers online. Thanks a lot for watching and one of the next videos will be Anubias Bay in Congo showing the habitat of Anubias. Amazing place. My friend Thomas Minesi from Congo sent me these images and we will talk about it in one of the next videos.